Good morning, students. I welcome you for the chemistry class. Today, in this video record class, you'll be learning about the washing soda, water of crystallization, and about POP. These concepts will not be taught in the online classes. So please make a note of that. First, let us study about washing soda. Washing soda is Na2CO3, so it is sodium carbonate. How it is prepared? Preparation. When sodium carbonate is manufactured by the thermal decomposition of sodium hydrogen carbonate, which is obtained by Solvay process. So this method you will be studying in the online class. So continuation of how the sodium bicarbonate is obtained, you have to go with thermal decomposition of sodium bicarbonate. How the sodium bicarbonate is obtained? It is NaCl when it is made to react with carbon dioxide, ammonia and water. You get NH4Cl and NaHCO3. So this is sodium bicarbonate. And this sodium bicarbonate when it is subjected to thermal decomposition, we do get carbon dioxide, water and sodium carbonate. And this is anhydrous. So dear students, you know that the, the equation has not been balanced. You know that you won't get full marks when the equation has been like a skeletal equation. Now your duty is you have to balance this equation. You can see here it is not balanced. There is Na2. Here it is only one Na. So balance the equation. Right. Then so what we got is anhydrous. So the sodium carbonate obtained in its process is very dry. Anhydrous. So we will say we will call this as soda ash or anhydrous sodium carbonate and washing soda is obtained by rehydration so what we have to do when we add water to it anhydrous what we got when you add water to it so what we get is Na2CO3 with the dot 10 H2O so when you rehydrate of anhydrous sodium carbonate you get hydrous sodium carbonate hydrous means they do have water content in that okay in the crystals right when they doesn't have water content, we'll say anhydrous. This is washing soda. So since there are 10 water molecules in washing soda, so what we saw the formula Na2CO3 dot 10 H2O. So we call this as sodium bicarbonate decahydrate. The sodium carbonate is a crystalline solid and it is soluble in water. When most of the carbonates are insoluble in water. But this is soluble in water. That is one property. Okay. The uses of sodium carbonate. So where it is used? It's used in the cleaning of clothes, especially in rural areas, to make detergents, to remove the permanent hardness of water. And it is used in the preparation of glass and paper. So basically, in the industries where we prepare glass and paper, they do use this as a raw material. Next, coming to water of crystallization. What do you mean by water of crystallization? Like a particular amount, a fixed amount of water molecules are present in a given unit of salt. Is it not a new concept? This you have already studied in 8th standard. So, particular crystal of a salt will have a particular fixed amount of water content. We will say that as water of crystallization. So, many salts contain water molecules and those salts we will say as hydrated salts. So, water molecules present in a salt is known as water of crystallization. A particular example in your prescribed syllabus, copper sulfate pentahydrate. Copper sulfate is CuSO4, pentahydrate, penta means phi, so phi H2O, that is blue in color. So, blue color of copper sulfate, it's due to the presence of this phi molecules of water. So, when this copper sulfate is heated, so when you heat that, what happens? This there's a loss of water molecules. So when they lose the water molecules, they will change the color because that particular, this particular fixed amount of water molecules will give a color, color to the salts. So when you heat it, when all the water molecules evaporate, so what you get, the color change you can see. So what you get will be the white color. So grayish white color, copper sulfate, anhydrous, you'll get, okay, copper sulfate. So this is called as anhydrous copper sulfate. So when you take this anhydrous water sulfate, when you cool it and then add water, 
what happens? So this anhydrous can be converted to blue color. So it gets hydrated again. No, this is magic. So blue to white again from white to blue. So this can be done in the lab and you know that during science exhibition students have done this water of crystallization. So you have to recollect. Then coming to POP. So what is POP? It's a plaster of Paris. So coming to the formula CaSO4 dot half H2O. Calcium sulfate hemihydrate. Can you think? The CaSO4 will have half molecule of water. So basically it is two molecules of CaSO4 will be having one molecule of water. Okay. When you take one CaSO4, automatically it will be half. That's it. Okay. Now the CaSO4 with two H2O, this is called gypsum. Right. So when you heat gypsum at the particular temperature, right, 373 Kelvin. So what you get is CaSO4 dot half H2O. This is POP and three-fourths of the molecule, that is one and a half molecules of water will be eliminated. So this is POP preparation, right? So this gypsum, when it is heated to a particular temperature, so temperature has been noted over here, you do get a POP, where three-fourths of the molecules will be evolved. It will be liberated. There will be a loss of water molecules. So go for the theory part. So heating of gypsum should be not be done above 100 degrees or 373. So what happens if I cross the temperature? So more when you supply the heat, what can happen? So about that, so water of crystallization will eliminate. You can see this again half also will start eliminating. There's loss of water molecules and what you get will be anhydrous. So what you get only is CaSO4. And this anhydrous is known as dead burnt plaster. And that cannot be used. So, you know, the use of POP, we cannot mold it again. So, whenever you get the dead burnt plaster and don't even think, mom, we can add water. No, you cannot add water and make, make it as POP. No, it cannot hold it. So, once it is burnt, we'll say it as dead burnt plaster. Okay. CSO4 plus half H2O molecules means that two molecules of CSO4 will share one molecule of water. So, when you take one CSO4, it will be half molecules of water. So, coming to properties. Has remarkable properties of setting into a hard mass on wetting with water. So this is important. So when you wet with water, it sets into a hard mass. So that is used where you can use POP to just uh, go to the medicinal things where you go with the fractured bones. So how to set the fractured bones is because of that. So it sets into a hard mass. Right. So CaSO4, half H2O. So when you get this POP, and again, when you add three-fourth of water, so what has been eliminated is one and a half of water. So you do get gypsum back, right? So just uh, gypsum can be got it back. So whenever you add the particular amount of water, so gypsum sets as a hard mass. Hence, POP should be stored in a moisture-proof container. When you just expose outside, it starts absorbing moisture. So it has a property of wetting with water and it turns into a hard mass. So that's why it has to be stored in moisture-proof container. So this can be of give reason question. Sure. So this POP thing. So what we use. And now you can list the uses of POP. Now it is used in hospitals for setting the fractured bones in the right position to ensure the correct healing and making toys, decorative materials and some cheap ornaments and the cast of statues used as a fireproof material it's used in chemistry lab so whenever any apparatus we do have air gaps you can fill those gaps by using this pop and making smooth surfaces such as for making ornamental designs or the ceilings so ceilings of the houses and other buildings so these are the uses of pop and dear students this three concept will not be discussed in the online class so that you can just watch the video and make the notes by yourself so any doubts, we'll discuss in the online class. Thank you. Have a nice day.